thanks for joining us again. And um, I just wanted to, since this is our first day of doing the 9 a.m. hour, I wanted to introduce a little bit more about myself. You probably know that I'm the health reporter here at KPRC, but during my time as the health reporter, I've developed a passion for helping to solve this mental health crisis that we're in. And it's why I serve on the board for Mental Health America of Greater Houston. And joining me now to talk more about the organization and its mission is Renee Tomzak, president and CEO of Mental Health America Greater Houston. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for the opportunity. So share, let's share with everybody about Mental Health America. What, what, what is the mission? How are you guys helping in the community? Sure. So Mental Health America of Greater Houston is the longest serving mental health education and advocacy organization in the Greater Houston area, focusing primarily on prevention. So mm -hmm. um, our work um, is, is in a variety of areas. Um, including children's mental health, veteran wellness. We also work with health providers to improve access to care. And um, we are that really the education and resource center for the community at large. Yeah, I love that. And I love that we're trying to tackle it from a prevention standpoint. And I know that this year you have a special focus on suicide prevention. Can you tell me more about why that's so important to you? So I'm gonna cite a couple of statistics. Um, Texas Children's Hospital came out with a report stating that they are seeing an 800% increase in children's mental health services related to issues of suicide ideation, suicide attempts, and aggressive behavior. Um, also, suicide is really important for us as we look at the data that we collect um, through our mental health screenings. So in 2022, 56% of people who took a mental health screening for depression reported days of, reported several days to every day in terms of thoughts of being better off dead or hurting themselves. Wow, those, those are good studies to cite too and good statistics to cite because we do keep hearing about there's a rise in anxiety and depression and that really paints a picture of, um, of just how, how difficult it is for so many people. There's so many people who are being impacted by this right now. And what are the ways that Mental Health America, I know you've worked with Texas Children's, you've worked with other you know, sure. um, organizations within our community mm -hmm. to help them recognize the signs and symptoms of a mental health crisis. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, so we provide trainings to a variety of organizations. So um, we have our Center for School Behavioral Health, which works directly with schools and other child-serving mm -hmm. organizations to help them really recognize uh, and refer to to resources that that can help. Also, you know, when we think about the school piece, also thinking about um, how they can, how you can recognize that within within the classroom. So, we also work um, with the health providers, right? So, um, one of the things that um, we we are seeing is um, access to care. It's very difficult. Yes. And it's especially difficult if you are a person who has other barriers, yeah. so transportation or economic barriers. So we work with health providers to ensure that when they're thinking of health, they're thinking of not only the physical, addressing yeah. the physical issues, but also the mental health Well, issues. we have to start integrating it in places like that because it's frustrating for me as the health reporter too when the conclusion to my story is, if you're in crisis, get help. But help can sometimes be a luxury for people. You know, it's, yes. it's not really accessible to a lot of people who are living paycheck to paycheck or, or, or sometimes they don't know where to turn. So thank you for, for being a resource <laughs> in our community and helping people recognize where they can get help. The luncheon coming up on September 7th, tackling suicide. Tell us more about that and can people still get tickets to go? So yes, you can still get tickets. Uh, they're available through our website at www.mhahouston.org. And we have a really exciting um, um, event plan. So our keynote speaker is Chris and Martha Thomas. So they, along with their son, Solomon, who happens to play for the New York Jets, uh, lost their daughter and sister to suicide at the tender age of 24, shortly after she left college. So mm -hmm. theirs is a story of hope and strength and um, 
we're really excited and, yeah. and uh, expect a, a full house. It's yeah. real, become a really important topic here in the Houston area. It'll be a really inspiring uh, luncheon for people to attend, and I hope that people get to hear more about their story.